Nice to meet you all. Um, I am 23, almost 24 years old, so I'm a little older than some of the other kids' kids, but not as old as some of the other ones <laughs> that have kids' kids. I do not have any. I'm going to share my testimony, and I'm a bit nervous because um, not only am I speaking to people I have never met before, but people I have grown up with and spent my whole life with, and I've never actually given my testimony, like, out in the open, here's my testimony. So, stay with me. Um, <laughs> so, I was born in New Delhi, India, when um, I was 13 months old. I came here to America and backtrack a bit. Um, I was actually born with a blood disorder. It's called thalassemia. It basically, I'm seeing the main changes in my DNA to make blood. So any blood that I do make is useless and actually harmful to my body. Um, so in India, obviously, like with the caste system and just the economy, everything there is really poor. And um, being a girl in India, especially, is um, really sad and so I was a girl in India with a blood disorder I have no like medical or no family history at all and um, in India they basically just gave me enough blood to keep me alive and um, when I was 13 months old I came here to the United States to get adopted into a family and which is a miracle in itself and um, when I got here they took me straight to the doctors and the doctors told um, my parents that I wasn't going to live. They were like, we're going to give her maybe six months. She won't make it to her second birthday. And I couldn't even lift up my head. Um, my mom says that those commercials they play um, about like orphan kids and everything, she's like, you could have been a poster child. You were that sick. I weighed 13 pounds at 13 months, and I just, I was really weak. And I was actually going to a different lady, and when she found out the doctor's report, um, she backed out of the adoption because she was going through a lot of personal loss in her life, and I just couldn't handle more. Um, but my parents were really, they're like the strongest Christians I know. And um, they just, they, when people ask them, like, why did you adopt this girl? They were like, we didn't want her to die without being loved. And we didn't want her to not know God's love. We didn't want her to leave this life not having a family. And um, so they went through the process of adopting me, even though they really were not financially secure. They already had a fourth kid on the way, so I would have made five. And um, in the early 90s, all the health issues were going on about everything. And everybody, especially people within the church, were saying, don't adopt her. She's going to bring these things into your family. You're not going to be able to provide for her. The numbers don't add up. Um, like, she's probably going to die anyway. Uh, but my parents are just full of love and faith, and they would be the process to adopt me. Um, and God just did a miracle in my life because when I was a baby, I was not held, I was not touched, I was picked up and put down, and that was it. And when my parents got me, they were like, hey, you wouldn't let us touch you. You were just like, get away from and everything, and um, like God just changed my life, and I look back and I see how um, God fought for me day after day after day. And um, there's a verse in the Bible that's in Exodus when God is talking to Moses, and uh, just the Israelites are so full of fear, and they're so back and forth with God. They're just like. One moment they're just like, yes, God is our God. With our God, we can scale a wall. And then the next day, they're just like, God, where are you? Like, what are you doing? Where are you? And um, there's a verse, and God says to Moses, it says, the Lord will fight for you. You need to only be still. And that verse just really struck out to me, because God was telling me, I will fight for you. You need to just be still. Like, just rest in my peace. Um... And a couple of years ago, I was able to just kind of take a step back and look back in my life and just see the spiritual battle that I was uh, had gone through my whole life. And I'm sure every single one of us, if we really took a step back, we would see how the enemy is after us. And for me, I saw as a child that Satan was after my life. And he was just like, 
uh, this kid should not live. I don't want this girl to live. And when he lost that battle, then he was like, well, maybe just I'll continue to attack her health to make her weak. And um, I have a, a great spiritual family and church and God. And just, I wasn't alone. Like, I was surrounded by amazing people who fought for my life and to kept keep me healthy and keep me happy. And um, I did it as high school, middle school, whatever phase. <laughs> started to go through the battle of the heart. And that's when it really hits, where it's just like, God, do I really give you my heart or not? You know? Like, I'm going to guess I'll believe in you in my mind. I'll give you what my, my thought process of what I believe and what I don't believe. But do I actually really want to give you my heart and those desires I have for whatever it is, like college, marriage, kids, whatever. And sports, wrestling, and stuff like that. Uh, just those desires, things we want to hold on to. Um, and Satan was after that, just like after my heart, and after that, just making me feel like my heart wasn't worth it. And I went through this, all these questions, and I was just like, God, why me? Like, why did you put me in this place? Why did you put me in this situation? Um, I'm letting you down. Like, I just felt like I was letting God down. Like, out of all the orphans in India, why did you pull me out? And I felt like I had to go home for that. Like, I had to be the good Christian. I had, and I loved God, so I wanted to be the good Christian. I was like, church, let's go. But I felt like I had to. Like, as a Christian, I had to do right. I had to, um, you know, do everything a Christian should do and handle everything a Christian should handle. And it's not just because uh, we're asked to do it, but it was like this requirement that weighed on my shoulder. Like, a, um, just like I felt like I had to be something big. I had to do something. Like, if God was really going to save my life, then I had to do something that everybody would know that's why this happened. And I was just like, I didn't see it. I'm like, I'm not that talented, really. I don't have any huge gift that God said, I'm saving this kid because she's a prodigy. It was not there. And um, God just kept saying, like, I'm fighting for you. And I just, like, it's because I love you. And it just hit me one day. And I just realized that God didn't save me because he wanted something of me or wanted me to do something. He saved me because he loved me. That because he thought I was worth dying for. And he just wanted me to know that. And he just wanted to um, watch me live life. You know? Whatever I did, if I felt like I messed up, if I totally just did something wrong, he wanted to watch me do it so he could say, hey, it's okay, I'm still here and I still love you. Like, God let us live so we could, um, God gave us life so he could watch us go through it, so he could take delight in us, and so we could take delight in him. Um, and just, that really started changing my life through prayer. And I started really like wrestling with things with God in prayer. And he gave me this verse in Hebrews 4, verse 16. It says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and by grace to help us in our time of need. And it just, I still go through a lot of battles. I still have a blood disorder. I go every three weeks to the hospital and I get blood transfusions. I take a really disgusting medicine every day and I try to smile about it and I try to be consistent with it and I'm not as consistent as I need to be. And um, I haven't graduated college, I'm not married, I don't have kids. And all these different things in the world says you have to be at this place by this age and I'm not there. And at the same point, like, I'm surrounded by some of the coolest people that I know and they love God and I get to love God with them and pour into them and they pour into me and together we're changing the world like one person at a time and God just keeps reminding me like when I look at my friends and I look at people on Facebook and Instagram and all these people I know who are doing cool things in the world and aren't Christians doing it like taking their cool pictures and their, you know, their fancy lifestyle or whatever they're doing God's like, yeah, but Katie, you're loving people. Like, you're not just loving yourself, you're loving others. And um, he just keeps reminding me that he loves us, and that we're worth dying for. And um, I wrote down a lot of stuff 
passenger that I also want to be able to say. But <laughs> don't let go of God because he doesn't let go of you. And he loves you. And he's not looking for you to perform on the stage. He just wants your heart. And he just wants you. That's it.